Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, here we are. So today we're going to talk about uh, creating uh, running totals uh, kind of page. Uh, there are a few different options to do that and maybe you can help me to come up with uh, a few new scenarios. Okay, let me... So this is the kind of page we're talking about. We have a, a database table with transactions. Transactions uh, can be have amount that is positive or negative. It's like your banking statement, for instance. And at the end of the day, we need to calculate how much money we have left. So for this kind of calculation, we need to be able to use uh, uh, the value in the total column which is calculated from the previous day if you have positive we add amount and we start with zero 33.5 we add 172.55 come up uh, with the total of 20605 Etc. If it's negative, we subtract it and it shows us what we currently have at the end of the day. So let me start with a symbol. Let me show you the, uh, this is basically the data in the database. So first three fields are uh, the uh, what is actually in the database. Yeah, here it is. Uh, that's our balance table. And these are results. So you can see that total is a calculated field. It doesn't have any value. We calculate it on the fly. Uh, while it's potentially we can uh, have the actual physical field in the database, we were running total, but we will have to recalculate it every time we change some uh, historical data. So we don't really want to do that and it will be much much easier if we just calculate it on the fly so this is what we will be doing uh, the easiest option is to use uh, php or c sharp code to perform this kind of calculation so when we load our page uh, we create a session variable named total and we set it to zero and then in our view as custom code for the total field we will simply add to this session variable the current value of amount field this is a really really simple idea and it has its limitation but in many situations this would be enough so so what we do here right now, we to this session variable, we add the current value of amount field. And we assign this value to our custom value. And this is pretty much it. So we increase the value of that session total and we will display it on the page. So if we build it and run it and here it is it's very simple very basic so what are uh, i'm showing you this uh, because this is the easiest option and in many many cases it will be easier to use something like this so what are the limitations of this approach uh first of all uh if you have uh data that spans over multiple pages you will not be able to do that so it doesn't work well with pagination because when we click to proceed to the second page we our code will reset uh, that session variable and it only works well when we have everything 
uh, on the same page. That's one of the limitations. Second limitation, if you want to do uh, group your data by uh, something that maybe by customer or by date, you also won't be able to do that. It only works when you sequentially go from one record to another and simply add uh, what is in the mount field. So there is, uh, again, the reason I show you this, this is a very simple technique and you can use it for something that is maybe something that is slightly different, not necessarily a running total. So when I'm talking about grouping the data, let me show you the difference Where is my web browser. So you can see that physically in this table, balance table, we have six records, right? We have two records uh, that belong to April the 3rd, right? And with our approach, we just have to display every single record the way it is, and we have uh, six rows here. But if you take a look at a more advanced example, like our SQL view total, you can see that uh, it uh, has uh, one entry per date. So data is grouped by date. And for instance, here we have amount minus 383.80, which comes as a sum of uh, these two records. So this is a little bit more advanced example. We can use grouping and since all the calculations are done on uh, database side, we can also, it will also work exactly the same way with multi-page kind of data. So it will work with pagination. So let me show you how it's been done. So uh, my example uses uh, MySQL and that's the SQL query that we will be using here. So the key is to create a variable uh, in a MySQL SQL query, assign it to zero. And then uh, we have a subselect with uh, group by, we group our data by date. And we select date and the sum of all transactions in this date. And then in our main SQL query right here, we assign a new value to this variable, run total, and it equals a previous value from the previous row with a current uh, sum that is coming here. Okay, that's the result of this SQL query right here. Now we need to move this SQL query into phpRunner or sprunner.net. Uh, the problem is you cannot just copy and paste this query into your table, uh, in the SQL query of a regular table. It will not work because uh, variables are not supported. But luckily, we have SQL views, and with a little bit of trickery, we can make it work. So let me show you uh what i did here and i will work the steps again to show you what i needed to change okay uh let's go to our sql view and let me copy this just in case if i break it okay uh let's switch back to sql mode right so this is our query. That's the same query I copy pasted in here. And if you run it, it will show us results. I have already uh, added those fields, date, C, and total. I have already added them to the page. So uh, the problem is uh, we have two queries here separated uh, by semicolon. And if you try to run it in the web browser just like this, it will break. But uh, it's not difficult to make it work. And let me show you because uh, when we have a SQL view, we can just switch to PHP code mode. So I will uh, erase my changes. I click generate PHP code. 
And this is the code right here. I hope you can see it. So let's see what we're doing here. You don't need to fully understand this code because we need to understand just enough to make it work. So that's our SQL query, right? And then we are getting a connection. We prepare our SQL query and we execute it. And the result is our array with uh, data. And the rest of it is just a standard code. We don't need to really do anything with it. So what we need to do here, we need to split the SQL statement into two SQL statements and run them one by one. So what I'm doing here is uh, that's going to be the end of our first SQL statement and we call them uh sql 2 and sql 1 and sql 2 equals this so we're doing two sql queries here and obviously we're going to need to prepare sql statements one and two one is working with SQL 1, and this one is working with SQL 2. And first of all, we execute the first one. We are not going to do anything with the result. We just execute it. So that's uh, uh, MySQL variable is populated, and then we execute statement 2. So this is pretty much it, right? We split it into two parts and two, two SQL queries. We prepare both of them and then we execute it and then the rest of the code goes the same way. So let me show you how it works. That's our SQL view. We reload it and we can see that it works. So here is the article that I uh, I'm talking about pretty often and it talks about conditional formatting, how you can change the way the individual uh, value is displayed, like a color or adding an icon or highlighting the cell or even highlighting uh, the whole row. I feel like this is exactly the kind of like a data where it makes sense to apply this kind of thing. So to this total column and I will set viewers uh, view is type to custom. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And I will apply this coloring pattern. Okay, let's do it. And it will probably display uh, more digits after the comma than we need to, which is great. So, because we can play with that as well. Okay. Okay, SQL U total, and here it is. Yes, uh, first of all, if it's negative, it displays in red. If it's positive, it displays in black, which is what we're looking for. So now let's see how we can, uh, let's just uh, format it as a currency, right? So we go to our US custom code. That is our value. So let's uh, do it again. Okay. Okay. We can see it is, yeah, the numbers are small, so but it will have uh, a thousand separated, I guess. Uh, let's me modify one of the values. This way, go back to the SQL view. And yeah, we can see that total is uh, as a commas 
is a thousand separator and that is a decimal separator.